Hey guys, Brendo Built Show, Thistle Hill, 1904 Mansion, awesome place, doing some structural work on the carriage house, come join me. You know, this is uh, 1904, so this is 120 years old next year. So it was a really well-built house. And so you had Sanguinette and Stats, who was an important architect, design the house. This would have been a big deal. So why are we reframing it? Why are we doing it? The fact is, is that when something's 120 years old, just like we're restoring the brickwork right now, there is maintenance that needs to happen. So we are doing basically structure pairs. They're gonna show you that inside, but this this you know huge I-beam, right? This steel I-beam is actually gonna go inside there. You'll see that where the roof is jacked out. We're gonna stick it up into the pocket and then joist hanger it, but we've redone that. Let me show you that. The structure work starts here. Notice that we've got this beam in place. There's an LVL here, okay? This whole roof structure has been lifted up. It's sagging about three inches. The ceiling inside was sagging three to six inches, and we're gonna show you that. But the structure work is starting out here. We've got these things laid up. We've had to redo the masonry. So they lift this up, they redo the masonry, and then they'll drop this back down. But let me show you what's going on inside. Look what we've done here. We had a sill plate okay that was rotted out and so now we have taken a pressure treated piece of lumber slid it inside here and you can start to see some of the water damage that was in here and us picking this up there's a real important one here and then the the cripples and things we put in in place here all new wood because we're trying to support this ceiling which i'll show you above this is pretty typical repair work that you would do in the framing where you've got termite damage or water damage coming back in and putting new material in there is pretty typical this wall has been repaired but this wall is really important because you'll see there's a lot of stuff it's supporting above. So one of the things that's happening here is we've got a window, okay, where that steel beam is going to go. So we have to support this area, okay? They had the original steel lintel was a half inch by, you know, six inch piece of plate steel that went across that opening, okay? We've added now this bar steel and tied those two together so that this opening, and you can see the, the mortar and the repairs that we're doing right here, they're gonna bit rebuild the brick above there, but now we have you know, supported this opening. It's not gonna be resting on this window because we've spread the, the weight distribution to the side, but that's why this window's out, that's why we're repairing that, and that masonry is gonna carry this beam when it gets set in. So I don't know if you remember, we were looking at this and we were talking about the masonry and the repointing that was needed, and all of this was gone, okay? I was reached my finger, it's just dust coming out of there. Well, that repointing is them going in and repointing the brook. Remember, the mortar is a sacrificial piece, okay? Sacrificial means that if anything's gonna break or if anything's gonna fall apart, it should be the mortar, okay? It's the same thing with the putty glazing on a window. You don't want the wood to rot, you want the putty glazing to leave. So this is a sacrificial member. That's why we can scrape out all the old mortar, tuck point it with new mortar, and tuck pointing basically means there's this long, thin piece of material, and you take the mortar up on a tray and you actually just slide and, and, and cut your mortar right back into the brick. So they're putting the mortar inside here and re-securing, re-strengthening this wall. So repointing, gosh, they're gonna be on this job for months repointing the brick, okay? Because it's a huge job, it's a huge building, it's all solid masonry. And you'll see on, on houses of this period it done a number of different ways. I don't know if you remember at Kell House that there was a very tight mortar line between the bricks and they were trying to project this monolithic look because all the bricks were the same color and they actually cut that mortar in and then sometimes they'll even dye that mortar so that it reads as just kind of one monolithic plane. And so there's a bunch of different methods for tuck pointing. There's different bead details you can get on that. We've got a little bit of that bead detailing that's gonna go on the main house. And so it's actually a really important piece of historic properties. Let me go up your stairs and show you an awesome LVL we put in. Okay, so remember we were pointing at the ceiling below and what was going on. You'll see that we've sistered. Okay, that means we've taken the original joist and we brought another joist alongside of it. We sistered it along so that that LVL is now supporting those joists. Look at all the weight that that ceiling was holding. So from that span all the way over to here, 
was supporting this. There's no wonder that that thing was swelled down, okay? And so now we've been able to lift that up. It's level now. You know, those LVLs are really important. Now, the other huge LVL is an 18 inch double LVL that's, that's going on the ridge. And another area that was being held up was this cupola, okay, with standard framing. How did we get this LVL in here? Because they've got all these collar ties. They've got double collar ties. This is a collar tie. As that roof frame goes up, this collar tie keeps that roof from spreading, okay? So good quality construction, right? Well built for 1904, but over the last 120 years, some spread and some other sag is taking place. So we are fixing that. We had to get this huge LVL in here and we actually cut a hole in the roof and with a crane actually slid that LVL in here so that we could support it. Now, look how we've supported it, okay? We've got this six by six fur beam, okay? And notice that it's slanted, okay? Notice that it's kicked back this way. That's so that we could get on that wall I showed you downstairs. That's so that we could push that over. And so you, you've got their historic beam right here and it was resting on that. That's the old mark where that, where that beam stood, but we wanted it resting on that wall, okay? We thought there was better construction for it to be sitting there. So we've kicked this over, and now this beam is supporting that LVL on this end. Now that the roof's off, we are basically strengthening this house up. We are, or this carriage house up. We are solving some of that sag and some of that thing that if we didn't take care of, you know, in the 20 years, we've got a, a really big problem. This hole, and you saw that steel beam. This is, we've got a steel beam that's gonna go all the way across here. And see this? This is the old support system for how they were holding up that roof and that ridge line. We're going in here and kind of supporting this whole thing. So that steel beam will be brought in, slid up over onto that masonry, slid up over into this masonry. So it's on solid masonry walls. We've got wood that we're hanging on the I-beam, the metal I-beam, and we are then going to joist hanger, okay, these joists, okay, onto that beam. So should be really secure. We should be able to take all this temporary supporting out so that everything will rest on this main beam, that LVL, that wall, everything's strengthened, everything's re-secured. That way, when the new roof goes back on, it's not going to sag, it's not going to cause bigger problems. talking about the fine art of masonry and you can see that little pencil detailing they've got here a better detail is maybe here where you see the discoloration where you see that little pencil mark is kind of a gray and the mortar is white because so what's happening here is they are going in and doing their initial you know putting the mortar in filling in these spots right they will come back later this all get washed so all this fuzzy stuff we get acid washed it gets cleaned with acetone and then they'll come back in and very carefully they'll put that new bead on top of this. And so it's a multi-step process. This first step, they're just with these little tools, okay? And you can see that this is called a striking tool, but there's different ways of doing that. And there's a little bead on there. Can you see that? And a smaller bead there. So there's two sizes and they are taking these little tools and you know pushing that mortar off their thing and they're pushing that mortar into these openings, right? And then they'll come back later with these striking tools and put the bead on it. So it's a multi-step process, but you can see the, the dainty nature of these tools and you know how this is redone, how this is done kind of almost handmade, right? As we redo this mortar, fixing all these spots that were kind of messed up. Okay guys, so taking care of this awesome mansion, we've got the tea house right here. The, the roof tile is off that. It's sitting around here and a few things. It's going to go away. We're restoring the carriage house. We're about to put scaffold all around this building. They're tamping down the dirt on the other side where we put a French drain in. We are going to scaffold this whole building. All that roof's going to come off. All this rot and repair that needs to take place around the cornice is going to be repaired. Then the new roof's going to come in. It's the longest lead item. The roof is about a 30 week thing. We've ordered it maybe three weeks ago, maybe a month ago. So got a little bit of time on that, but a great restoration, awesome team, awesome people taking care of this. The windows are coming out as we speak, and so those are going to get restored. This house is going to get a revamp like it hasn't seen and since it was brand new. So a lot of fun, a lot of cool details. You guys keep following here, and we'll keep giving you updates on what's going on. I'm Brent Hull. Thanks for watching.